Lately, I've been questioning a lot of things around me. I can sure identify where it started and where it came from, but I just can't get it all out. An idea cannot be killed. You may try to not think about it or distract yourself, but it's there, and it will always be there. Now if you'd like to hear a little bit more about me, just sit tight for a brief prelude. At a young age, I was like any normal boy, except for one little hindrance. I grew up, attended school, went to college, and graduated. All with good, if not exceptional grades. I swam, participated in clubs, you name it. I used to be a very active and healthy guy. The hindrance grew with me. The doctors call it myopia. The kids at school call it glasses. I call it bad luck in genetics. Well, whatever you call it, I was stuck with it, and it was stuck with me. It started with a slight blurriness, then it became a wall of impassibility. Surgery helped me slightly, but in the long run it just prolonged my fate. Eventually I had the misfortune of coming down with eye cataracts. The surgery this time was damning my retinal detachment, occurring when the retina fully detaches itself from the eye. It can lead to severe myopia to blindness. In my case, it led to blindness at the age 18. Now blindness meant several things to me. A dark point in my life, both literally and figuratively. I imagined that I was in a hole, a black place where no light shined. I existed there alone in pure isolation. Sure, they could peer down in the hole to talk to me from the bright place above me, but they could not see. They could pretend, but they couldn't comprehend what I was going through. I used to drink heavily and experiment with substances in order to dampen my depression. When you have that much detachment from the outside world, you begin to think. Alright, so imagine you're in a room. There's a ball in the room. You look at it and it is red. It's hard to touch. It bounces with a satisfying thud. Now if you leave it placed down on the floor and walk out of the room facing the opposite direction, you cannot see hear, or touch it anymore. What evidence do you have that that ball still exists? Infants go through this in their lives. Due to their predeveloped minds, I'm sure we're all familiar with the game Peekaboo. Well, if the child sees its mother, it's aware it exists. But when the hands come down, where did the mother go? She disappeared. And it's because the baby cannot perceive her. It firmly believes that she does not exist. Now apply this concept to us. Growing up, our brain develops, and we infinitely know that an object continues to exist. It is something we learn to accept. However, when you're alone in a room at night, the world around does not matter. We are secluded to our own little world, and the immediate area is tangible. Now imagine the darkness envelops your entire life. You cannot see what is around you. So what proof do you have that it truly exists? Sure, you can touch, hear, and smell, and taste, but how do you know you're not being manipulated? We have developed technology such as television, which we can create a world that exists in our vision. While watching it, our mind becomes absorbed in it, and we zone out from our surroundings. Our subconscious makes us believe that we exist in that world for a time. And when the movie ends, we snap back to reality. We have created means to manipulate vision, so why is that concept not applicable in our immediate world? Nowadays, every person that I pass may greet me with a hello or brush by me. While I can feel and hear them, how do I know they exist? How can I be absolutely sure that every single person and thing around me is living? And has a conscious mind like me. I used to try making myself feel to cement the outside world, experiencing pain through sharp tools. However, this never worked out for me. It was just a mere interlude, after which I grasped the full nature of my surroundings. I believe this thought was taken over my mind, a sort of obsession. Though I doubt I'm wrong, I spend my time isolated here in my room, where in front of me extends about four feet 
and the one behind me is six or so feet. I know the carpet is soft, yet scratchy. It smells damp. Possible mold in here. The air is seeping cold. Yet, I know none of these things. There is no world outside of here. As I move through my house, I believe the surroundings are a mirage that only exists when I'm around. I feel as if I'm in some grand surreal play. The set is created around me as I go through the scenes. The characters appear and disappear, play different roles, but the only ones that relate immediately to mine. I feel as if the universe is trying to keep me occupied. Or maybe, I'm all that exists. Maybe each and every one that comes to visit me under the promise of hospitality, or the structural safety of my home, or investigation, or for my own benefit, is coming to get a spark of life, or a glimpse of living. One time I tried communicating with the actors, tried to get a feel for the depth of their minds. You see, I could believe they exist just like me. However, something in my mind denies it. If a child can be deceived by something as small as hands, and what says I couldn't be deceived by the world too. I grew up with people around me. Everyone did. They accept it and there's no question to it. Especially with my once premature mind. What stipulates that I should not be tricked? I recognized this midway through my interrogation with one of them and left him out in the shed in the backyard. He was too weak to plead. However, I doubt he suffered much. I shut the door, walked upstairs, and he ended. All was quiet. Now one of them came and searched my home. Police. A figment of my imagination that I once respected. I suppose I cannot fully dictate the flow of my environment, as they were able to capture me and take me to another room. Concrete floors. They allow me to write. However, I doubt my handwriting is much legible anymore. I write this now to whom it may concern to help you grasp the truth. Perhaps that there are those of you like me. Perhaps nothing exists beyond the exit door. Either way, I'm confined here, as I have always been. Nothing has changed. <laughs>